Well, in this video, I'm going to look a little at projectile motion. In particular, trying to uh, neglecting air resistance, find what launch angle for a projectile produces the maximum range. That's the that's the goal. Again, what launch angle produces the maximum range? Now, what we're looking at here, picture, is the uh, an object being launched, in this case from, say, ground level zero, and landing in a gully or something, valley that's 192 feet that's out below uh, where it was launched from. The same problem as if you were, if this was the ground down here and you call that a Y equal to zero, and up here Y was 192, where you were launching from 192 feet uh, above the ground. The same problem. Anyway, um, what we're noticing here is that if you launch it uh, at a, making an angle of zero degrees with the horizontal, you get this black path like that. If you launch it here at a little more than a zero degree launch angle, the, the green path, uh, you wind up uh, way out here. Uh, the red path is a 45-degree launch angle, and that does maximize the range in this picture if you were landing back here at the same height as you were launched from. But in this scenario that I'm showing on the screen, it doesn't. Uh, this one gets 60-degree launch angle, and it uh, actually gets the shortest uh, least range, range being distance from here back to here. Uh, in this uh, picture scenario. A lot of people think that 45 degrees will maximize the range, but what happens is 45 degrees maximizes the range if you're landing at the same height as you were launched from, uh, but not otherwise. And in fact, we can show that if you do uh, land at the same height as you were launched from, it's pretty easy to show that 45 degrees does maximize uh, the range. Here's a, the old neglecting air resistance calculus position function, vector value function. Here's the x component. Here's the y component. And in the case uh, where h is zero, where you're launching uh, say from uh, from the ground level at h equal to zero, and then you're going to land at uh, zero for the the y value. Uh, you do uh, maximize the range with a 45 degree launch angle. So, uh, looking at our position function, and setting the y value equal to zero, and then uh, uh, factoring out a one half t. And, uh, of course, t equal to zero for time is not going to get you anywhere. So we want to look at t equal to two times the initial speed times the sine of the launch angle divided by the gravitational constant. And uh, what we can do then is represent our range function, x of t, as a function of theta, replacing t with what equals in terms of theta, and do a max-min problem. So here is x as a function of theta. And if I uh, did a little maneuvering to it here, wrote it in terms of sine of 2 theta, differentiate with respect to theta, say it equal to 0. And uh, this is just going to be a constant here, so that is going to equal 0 if cosine of 2 theta is 0. means 2 theta 90 degrees, or pi divided by 2 radians. 45 degrees to maximize the range. Uh, what your intuition might have told you is true, but the question is, would 45 degrees maximize the range if the object did not land at the same height as it was launched from? Well, my opening picture clearly demonstrated that. Here we've got a little animation showing a, a variety of launch angles an animated uh, black path, and then here's the zero degree one that actually maximizes the 
range it turns out in green uh, 45 degrees in red 60 degrees in in blue and uh, if you wanted to actually figure, fiddle with that and, and, and stop it I'm going to put a little mp4 video also on YouTube uh, that will uh, be this uh, this one has a slider now so I can actually control the uh, the animation, so to speak, and stop it. So if I, you know, I can play the animation right here, but if I wanted to actually look at it different uh, places, I can click in here, click in here, and you notice the animated uh, black path is moving about. I mean, one question one might wonder about is if you launch from here, but it's going to land up here on a plateau. Uh, what launch angle would maximize the, uh, uh, the range, the distance in the X direction, say down range, where it was landing, it was landing up here. And uh, leave that for another video, but uh, you could actually play with the, uh, the animation here and, and try and get a sense if you actually just cure a horizontal line across here. And uh, of course, it would pass through on the way up, but you want to know on the way down if it got back down to that height, what launch angle would maximize the range in that scenario. Uh, but not not the problem for this video, although we could handle it in a similar manner. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, something a little different than than uh, maybe you, you might have seen before. Uh, so the question, the answer is uh, clear that 45 degrees is not going to maximize uh, the range if the uh, object is not landing at the same height as it was launched from. Uh, so we're going to look at the case where it's landing at a, a height lower than that that it was launched from. Now what you can do, or could do, is here's that position function again. Now with H not going to be zero, so if h is not zero, if we now take the y component and set it equal to zero, so we're launching from say maybe h greater than zero, but going to land at a height of zero, uh, then uh, we got to solve for t here, uh, setting the y component equal to zero. So quadratic and form, you can use the quadratic formula to complete the square if you have fun doing that. And solve for t. And we get this. And I said, that's ah, not quite such a simple expression for t in terms of, of theta. But we can get x in terms of theta. Take our x component, which I'm going to figure out you know, what value for theta would maximize the range. So x is a function of theta would equal this. We can maneuver a little bit, get down to here. You know, if you want to look at that maneuvering more closely, uh, just, just, you know, just pause the video. So here's a, actually a function of theta. Now, could differentiate that with respect to theta, set that derivative equal to zero like I did in the uh, uh, launch angle uh, uh, problem just completed where we're going to have the object landing at the same height as we launched from. Uh, do the same thing here, but the differentiation would be a bit more, more challenging and setting that equal to zero would not be quite such a uh, simple solution. I'm going to show you something different. That's the pur big purpose of my video here is to show a you know, kind of a cool alternative. So, again, starting with this, I'm uh, not going to differentiate that. At least not right now. Not at all in this video. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is before I, I proceed to my uh, uh, formula solution, I'm going to look at a special case. I'm going to uh, launch with a, an initial speed of 48 feet per second. Uh, use uh, feet in seconds, so G32, gravitational constant. And launch from 192 feet above the ground. I'm going to call it a... a but zero. I'm going to call H 192. In that case, if I put these numbers in here, I wind up with uh, this function, which I can simplify a bit to here. So here's a special case, X, a function of theta, 
where they're at a long speed of 48 feet per second, 32 for G, and an initial height of 192 uh, feet above the ground. And the question again is what, uh, in this case, special case value for theta would maximize the range. Rather than differentiate, I'm going to just look at this on a, on a graph and calculate. Here's a graph of the, of the actual function, with this uh, x-axis being the theta axis and the y-axis being the x-range axis. And clearly, there's a high point on the graph by in here someplace. Looks like it's uh, uh, maybe close to pi divided by 8. Clearly not pi divided by 4 to maximize the... Uh, the range maximizing in the height of this uh, graph is you maximizing the x value, the actual range of this uh, projectile. I can approximate that on a graph and calculate. I did that on a, a TI-84 color emulator. And uh, so this is really the theta axis and the x axis. But for the calculator, this is the x axis, x the y axis. So x is theta y is the, uh, the range x, and the, uh, the maximum occurred at about a uh, x radian measure, using radian mode for this graph, about 0.3782286 radians. And the range about 181.196 feet. That's what the calculator told me. Now, I teach calculus three, among other things, and uh, one of my students, Austin, uh, did something for me for extra credit. He actually uh, solved uh, not for x in terms of theta, but for theta in terms of x. wasn't quite what I had originally asked the, the class to, to attempt, but um, turned out to be a rather interesting result that you got. What was done, and here's your position function again, uh, t times g, acceleration to gravity, gravitational constant, h initial height, d sub zero initial speed, theta longs angle relative to the horizontal. So a, like a position vector value function, x component, y component, like before. This time, uh, we're going to solve for t in terms of x in the y uh, component function. Now, if you do that, uh, you can then uh, set that uh, value. Uh, now, I'm sorry, I solved for t in terms of x in the x component function, and substituting that into the y component function. So if I solve for t in terms of x, we get this from the x component function. Substitute this for t in the y component function. And now we're assuming that our launch projectile is going to land at y equal to 0, try to figure out, again, the goal is to figure out the launch angle theta that would maximize the range. So uh, this right here is setting y equal to 0, replacing t with uh, what it equals in terms of theta, gives us this relationship. I did a little maneuvering here, and that turned into that. And, uh, and multiply each side by cosine squared theta. I let this expression here be represented by, by C, just to simplify the look of it. And a little more uh, algebra, and we've got, uh, we've got this. This is repeated on top of this slide here. And uh, did a little more maneuvering and representing this instead of in terms of theta, in terms of to theta, again, stop the, you know, pause the video if you want to look at that more closely, and got down to here, this relationship, called that equation one. Now, making use of a relationship from trigonometry, in trigonometry, we know that A times sine theta plus B times cosine theta can be represented as a number R times the cosine of theta minus what's called a phase angle phi. And that value of r squared to a squared plus b squared. So if I actually apply this to an equation 1 up above, then what I can uh, do is I can turn uh, this thing here 
becomes this thing down here. Uh, the H and X were the A and B, and uh, so you wind up with uh, this, this R value being square root of H squared plus X squared, then cosine of 2 theta minus phi, and then plus the H minus 2C just tagged along. So equation 1 became this equation down here, phi being the inverse tangent of x divided by h, that was a divided by b. So using this uh, relationship from trigonometry, I get this. Now this we can solve for theta. We can quickly solve for cosine of 2 theta minus phi. Uh, then cosine of 2 theta minus phi is the inverse cosine of this. 2 theta then would be this, adding phi to each side of the equation. Remember, phi is inverse tangent x divided by h. Dividing by 2, we've solved for theta in terms of x. And you might ask, well, what good did that do? Well, here's the, remember, the goal here is to figure out the value for theta that will maximize the range, maximize x. Well, this, uh, this argument right in here for the inverse cosine function, that inverse cosine function, its domain is negative 1 to 1. So this expression in here can't be any more than 1. You might anticipate that uh, the value for x that's the largest that it could possibly be will occur when this argument for your inverse cosine function was 1. Okay, that's the largest that this expression can be. And if this expression here would correspond to a function that was an increasing function, then the largest value for x is going to occur when this expression right here is 1. That's why I anticipate it. Turns out to be true. So, uh, and that being the case, you know, the inverse cosine of 1 uh, being 0, uh, this means that theta would be the inverse tangent of x divided by h divided by 2. That's what would give you the maximum possible range. That was a uh, uh, speculation. Well, will prove it's true. All right, so looking at theta equal to that, uh, remember that the c value here was was this. So that means that the argument for the inverse cosine function is going to be this thing right here. got to be less than or equal to 1 because it's the argument for an inverse cosine function. Maximum possible value for x will occur when that equals 1. I'm sure of it. Well, if we uh, take that as, as q and solve this for x, uh, we can do a little algebra, get down here, square each side of the equation, get to here, and uh, subtract out the h squared, and we got this equation right here. Pause it if you want to look at that a little more. Factor x squared out, well, set each factor equal to zero. Well, x equal to zero is not going to maximize the range, so let's take a look at this set equal to zero. This has just one lonely little x squared in it. We can easily solve that for x squared. Do a little algebra maneuvering. x then would equal the positive square root of x positive. It's the range. Positive square root of this, which can be written like that. So right here we have a nice little formula that will actually uh, give us, I would claim the uh, expression, the formula for the uh, maximizing uh, the range, and of course uh, that uh, meant that theta, getting rid of that uh, inverse cosine of 1 being 0, would just be this. So we're going to actually maximize our range if theta is the inverse tangent of x divided by h divided by 2 where x is, in fact, determined by this formula here that gives us the maximum range. Now, recall from my graph and calculator solution, here's the one done on another calculator, 
both of them gave me about the same result. Remember, a calculator can just an approximator here, here. But it uh, gave us a, a failure value of in radiance, 0 0.3782286, and a maximum range about 181.1963. Remember that y was the range. But here, using my formula, x is going to equal exactly 24 times square root of 57 feet, maximum range, which is about 181.1963 feet, just what the calculator said. And then failure would be exactly uh, this value here, about 0.3782219 radians. Uh, calculator was accurate out to the 8, so is this one. And not so much after that, but uh, again, it's, it's just giving you an approximate approximation here, maximum approximation. Uh, a little better job was done on a free online TI-89 that I uh, checked it out on here. We got a 1.8 here, and 1.9 for the exact value approximated. So uh, again, same same thing for the Y coordinate, which is actually the range. So. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you were doubting what I'm saying is true, here's that function that I, I claim was an increasing function, and therefore I'm going to maximize x when the value of all this was 1. Well, the derivative of this function, using a little calculus now, grinding out this derivative is it's this right here. And for, uh, for positive values for x, this has got to be positive. So you got an increasing function which confirms that uh, the maximum positive value for the range does occur when that this function f of x takes on its largest possible value, which is 1. Pretty cool, eh?